Well, good evening and welcome to Monday Thursday worship. Uh, we continue on our journey through Holy Week now. Um, and this is the service, which of course we remember uh, Jesus' mandate, uh, Jesus' new commandment to love one another as he has loved us. Um, one of the ways Jesus shows his love is through his washing his disciples' feet. Um, and so this is a love that serves rather than seeking to be served. Um, as part of this, the, one of the traditions on this day is a foot washing. Uh, so we invite you, uh, we'll be inviting you into that later in the service. This is also the night in which we remember the institution of Holy Communion. It's perhaps harder than usual to observe this service tonight without celebrating the Eucharist. Uh, but perhaps this makes us hungrier than ever for Christ's presence with us in bread and wine. For we will return to the table once it is safe to do so. Tonight's service ends with the solemn reading of Psalm 22. This is the psalm in which the writer cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some tellings of the gospel story uh, show that Jesus quotes this from the cross. Um, and for us tonight, it marks the transition then from good from Monday Thursday into uh, Good Friday. Good Friday at home worship will commence tomorrow evening, a little later, around 7.30. We invite you to pull up the video at that time and join with others in worship at that time. We do have a few members serving with us in worship tonight in their own homes, being spliced in as we're able to the video. Uh, of course, we have uh, Glenn Odenbrett on organ. Uh, we also have Vicki Lester, who will be singing a solo piece. Uh, Barb Decker is our reader, and Christy Bohink is our assisting minister. So to prepare for service tonight, as you prepare your space at home, uh, we invite you, of course, as is our tradition now, to light a candle in your midst or bring a lamp close by as you're able. Tonight, we also invite you to fill a large bowl with warm water. This is not for baptism tonight, but for foot washing um, or alternately hand washing. Uh, if you're just on your own, we invite you to wash your own feet or wash your own hands during the time allotted. Um, but if, of course, if you're with someone or a few people, uh, we invite you to wash one another as you're able, as makes sense in your context. So you need that bowl with water and uh, a towel as well. So if you need a minute to pause the video now and grab that, you can do so. And then, of course, at last, we invite you to get the digital copy of our bulletin on our website, messiahlindhurst.org, so that you can follow along with the responses, with the readings, and the citations and all of that at home. And so now as God gathers us on this holy night, uh, we invite you to prepare for worship with the music of the prelude.
-hmm. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and one another. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus the Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought, ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Humanity has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as, I have, I, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For tonight's service, I want to offer just a few observations to guide us in this Holy Week that is so different from so many other Holy Weeks we've experienced through the years. And the first observation is that the experience of this particular Holy Week is perhaps much closer to the experience of the first Holy Week 
than any we have experienced in recent memory. For those first Jesus followers likely had an incredible burden of anxiety upon them deep in their bodies as they faced the prospects of life without their friend, life without their faith community, and life without the certainty of a happy ending. It certainly, of course, is not the same situation as we are in in our world today, that situation that they were in um, all those centuries ago. But I wonder if we might at least be comforted by the knowledge that people of faith have struggled through life even since the inception of this tradition of which we are part. The second observation I want to make is for us to notice the way that Jesus cares for those whom he loves. Tonight's Gospel text from the Gospel of John has long been associated with Maundy Thursday. Of course, Maundy uh, comes from uh, the word in Latin that means mandate, which is a nice cognate into English. Uh, but this refers to that mandate, that new command that we hear of when Jesus tells his disciples to love one another just as he has loved them. And in the story, in love, Jesus takes on the posture of a servant, of all things, of a slave even, of the lowest position in the common household. For when people would gather for a meal in the way that was common at the time, of course, the host, the most important person in the room, would sit at one end of the table, leisurely reclining there. It was a low table, not a high one like we have today. And then the guests would sit all around the table. And then the servant would serve from the far end. Um, and that might be um, a servant, a slave, someone of low stature. Uh, oftentimes these were women in this context. But in the way that the Gospel of John tells this story of Jesus eating with his disciples, Jesus flips this whole social convention on its head revealing something about him and his work and his ministry, but also about God and about God's way in the world. For Jesus moves from that prestigious position to that low position, signifying his intent to serve and care for others and care for the bodies, especially of those whom he loves, which, of course, is all of us. This is why we invite you together later in the service into this foot washing ceremony, either by your own hand or by someone who is with you. And the third observation I want to make for tonight comes from our first reading from the book of Exodus. In this particular passage, uh, the text recalls some instructions for the observation of the Jewish Passover meal, which was, of course, the celebration of God's deliverance of the people from Egyptian slavery. And I want to draw our attention to the way that such a holy observance was made. For each family would follow the rituals of the night in their own homes, it says. Especially note that in verse 6, it says that each family would slaughter uh, their lamb at twilight. And they wouldn't go to some central location to all do this together. They'd each do it in their own homes, following the tradition as they're able with those around them. And I can't help but think that we are similarly observing the rituals of our faith this year. Not in some central location, but each in our own home as we're able. And the gift of this is that God's presence then is made known just as much in our homes as in any sanctuary or cathedral or holy space that is typically set apart for the rituals and observances that form us as people. It 
It's uncertain what happens next in our world, as always, maybe more today than usual. But I think that together, we can take comfort in knowing that no matter how socially distanced we are, God is a God who is with us in it and who loves us through it all, no matter where we find ourselves. Our hymn for tonight is called Ubi Caritas et Amor, uh, which in our hymnal is hymn number 642. Um, this is another hymn uh, similar to the one we sang this past Sunday, on Palm Sunday, um, that is used by the Taze community in France as a meditative refrain. And uh, if you were able to uh, worship uh, with us on Palm Sunday, uh, you probably heard us talk a little bit about the way that these songs are sung in repetition. Uh, so usually a leader will sing through the melody for the first time, and then I invite you then to listen to that melody and then sing along with us. And I'll sing through it a handful of times and we kind of sing it as a mantra, sing it as an intention, sing it as a, a beckoning of God's presence to be with us. Um, and um, the, the words of this uh, are, are particularly fitting for the night. Um, the English translation goes, Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there, God is dwelling there. And so now we sing Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there, God is dwelling there. Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there, God is dwelling there. Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there, God is dwelling there. Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there. God is dwelling there. A couple more times. Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there. God is dwelling there. Last time. Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there, God is dwelling there. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of love, Unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O God. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O God. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. 
We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. Hear us, O oh God. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit. Especially we pray for Judy, Lynn, Will, Jay, Janie, Brian, Lisa, Takuya, Helen, Julia, all families in need of comfort and healing, and all those in our hearts. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O oh God. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls, that your love and welcome may be made known to all. Hear us, O oh God. We have some extra prayer requests. Dear Lord, we continue to pray for all coronavirus victims and families and for all medical caregivers and researchers working to contain it and find a cure. We pray that the chemo will work as well as it did before for Shar, so she can meet her grandchild due this September. And we pray for patience for Josh. We continue to pray for Richard and Denise as they seek treatment and answers to fight cancer. The woman who wrote the 2020 words to the Church's One Foundation needs the prayers of us all. Carolyn's husband Bruce has a bone marrow transplant, has had a bone marrow transplant, and is quite vulnerable to this virus. We pray he stay healthy and gain his strength back. We pray for Karen Murphy as she continues to search for treatment for her Lyme disease to work in her body. We pray for healing and calming for Karen, and we pray for continued strength and support for Les and the kids. We also pray for Laura Kennedy and that things will go well with her biopsy. Hear us, O oh God. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who were imprisoned persecuted or martyred for their faith, especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Hear us, O God. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you as you're able. Send a text message to someone you know who's watching right now. <laughs> uh, connect as you're able. God's peace. Peace. For our offering tonight, we of course uh, continue to be mindful of those around us who are in need, um, especially acutely so uh, in this crisis. Um, Know that any gifts you continue to make to the church, uh, whether you mail them in or give electronically through our website or give on a recurring basis, uh, set up through um, direct deposit, um, know that all those gifts support work uh, both locally and broadly. Uh, but if you want to make extra gifts to organizations in need, uh, we're especially mindful of local food banks, um, especially the Heights Emergency Food Center, um, that's a big one uh, close by. Um, they are in continual need of food and resources, um, but also uh, Lutheran Metropolitan Ministry continues to need assistance as well. I think they were recipients of a grant uh, this week that helps them to house folks adequately during this time, um, but uh, there's always more help needed. So your gifts are encouraged both near and far as you're able. And so now in this time, in this Monday Thursday service, we invite you to grab that bowl of water. And uh, as you're able uh, to wash one another's feet or hands or to wash your own feet or hands and to know that love of Christ, that mandate um, that we are to love one another as Christ has loved us. Oh. 
I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And He walks with me And he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known He speaks and the sound of his voice Is so sweet the birds hush their He gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go through a voice of woe His voice to me is calling And he walks with me and he talks and he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For this last part of the service, we invite you to listen um, and ponder the words of the psalmist as we enter into this holiest night of the year. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. 
They curl their lips. They shake their heads. Trust in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a slashing and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. From my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far away. O my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls. You have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted.